Hi, I'm Paul Kogan from GK Tuition, and in this video I want to talk to you about trigonometry. Now the question I've chosen to go through here is 2015 Paper 2, Question 5. In the first part of this question we're given one of our proofs. We need to prove that the tan of A plus B is equal to tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B. Now when we were going through trigonometry in class, we handed out a two pages, a two page document that had all of your proofs for trigonometry in it. So this was around, this was the seventh or eighth one on that page, so just make sure you're clear on it. It has come up a number of times in the leave insert. The first thing I want you to recognize is that this is one of our compound angle formula from page 14 in the log tables. Because this is a compound angle formula, I can only use things that precede it in the log tables in order to prove it. So if you look at page 14 in your log tables, the compound angle formula come before the double angle formula, which means that I cannot use a double angle formula in order to prove this. I can only use, if this is a compound angle formula, I can only use other compound angle formula and things on page 13 in order to prove this. But then once I've proven this, I'll be able to use it to prove something that comes later on in the log tables. So it's just important you recognize you can only use things that precede it in the log tables in order to prove it. So in this case, we're going to take the left-hand side and we're going to turn it into the right-hand side. So we just take tan of A plus B. In page 13 in your log tables, it says that the tan of an angle is the same as the sine of that angle over cos of that angle. So the tan of A plus B is the same as, as the sine of A plus B over the cos of A plus B. Now we can use our compound angle formula to simplify this. In page 14, it tells me that the sine of A plus B can be rewritten like this. The cos of A plus B can be rewritten like this. And I think that it's this line here where you might, jumping from here to here probably seems like a big jump. But it should be obvious to you. Okay, so I have two terms on the top and two terms on the bottom. You should look towards what I'm trying to prove. I want to end up with tan of A plus the tan of B. The key is I want to have a 1 on the bottom. I want to have a 1. The first term on the bottom of my fraction, I want it to be a 1 which means I want that the cos of A cos of B to become a 1. So you should just ask yourself, when you're at this stage, just ask yourself, what do I need to do to this term in order to convert it into a 1? Well, to convert any number into a 1, you just divide it by itself. So I know that on the next line, I want to divide the cos of A cos A cos B by itself. But I can't just randomly divide one of my terms by cos A cos B. So if I'm going to divide this term by cos A cos B, I have to divide all of my terms by cos A cos B. So that's all that I've done on this line. I have my four terms here and I divide all four of them by cos A cos B. So clearly cos A cos B divided by cos A cos B, that's just going to be a 1. If I take my first one on the top here, I have a cos B on the top and a cos B on the bottom, and I'm left with the sine of A over the cos of A. The sine of A over the cos of A, if you look at page 13 in your log tables, that's the tan of A. For the next term here, I have a cos A on top and a cos A on the bottom, so I'm left with just sine B over cos B, oh, cos, sine B over cos B. From page 13 in my log tables, I know that that is just the tan of B. For this one, nothing cancels, but I have sine A over cos A, which is tan A, and I have sine B over cos B, which is tan B, which means I'll take my minus, and this just becomes the tan of A times the tan of B. So I started off on my left hand side and I've ended up with the right hand side. So I've ended up proving what I needed to prove. And notice that we only used formula that preceded this one in the log tables. I used compound angle formula and I used formula from page 13 in my log tables. So I hope this video made sense. Make sure you're very clear on all your trigonometry proofs. So you've got seven or eight proofs that you need to make sure that you're clear on. Um, if anyone's unsure on that, then just let me know in class and I'll clarify it or I'll explain it differently.